Hello everyone and welcome to my video, the crochet pre-beginner pre tutorial number three. Um, in our last video, I told you a little bit about crochet hooks and the different sizes and how to read what size your hook was. I also went over a few different supplies that you would need for each project that you work on. So first of all, I wanted to touch on the ends of uh, the ends that are sticking out of your crochet project. I kind of talked about this in the last video when I was showing you tapestry needles and how you would need to weave your ends in. So as an example, I had uh, whipped up a few little gauge swatches here. We're gonna go over gauge today and uh, why gauge is important, when you should be concerned about gauge. But before we get into that, I just wanted to give you a visual example. I'm a visual learner, so it really helps me when I can see things to relate uh, what someone is saying to. So <clears throat> the last video I was talking about how when you very first start a project, you'll have an end, which is this end here. And you'll also have an end where you have finished off. So this is just an example of those two things. So when you finished a, cro oh, excuse me, a crochet project, you would need to take these ends and you would need to weave them in to your work so that way that they're not sticking out and looking you know, unfinished. So that's all that was about. Um, and so let's get started with gauge. I came across a couple of my pattern books and I thought they had some really good examples of what gauge is. So when you go to the fabric store and you're in the yarn aisle and you're looking around for you know whatever kind of yarn that you're gonna buy, you might not notice that there's a few um, kind of like example gauge swatches of different stitches that are hanging along with the yarn. Um, I know Joanne Fabrics does this a lot and they'll have free patterns that you can take that are hung up in the aisles with the yarn. And a lot of times they'll have a gauge swatch with that so that way you can see what the pattern actually looks like what the you know it's tangible it's something you can hold on to and you can see do I like this or do I not like this so the reason why gauge is important is because no two crocheters crochet the same gauge um, everyone has their own tension that they use for a project and the way that they hold their yarn and their hook is going to make a big difference on how big your stitches are and the gauge for your project. So when we're talking about gauge, we're talking about um, actually how many stitches will fit into a certain inch um, example. So I know that sounds really confusing, but I'm just gonna show you a picture here. This is from one of the books that I have in my collection. And I just want, I'm not gonna read this to you, but I just wanted to show you that these two gauge swatches here these are both actually the same size. It doesn't look like they are uh, in the picture, but I thought this was a really good example to show you that you can have two swatches that are the same size and it just makes a difference. Like this one, they used a larger hook. So there's less stitches in each row as compared to this one where they used a smaller hook. So um, another example of this would be this little swatch that I crocheted here, I made this with a G hook or a four millimeter hook. And then I went ahead and I made a, another swatch and this one I made with a J hook. So this is my J here, this is a six millimeter. So this is a much larger hook than the G. So um, this swatch here is actually five rows, this one is four but um, I wanted to just show you a quick example using different colors of how much of a difference that it really makes uh, what size hook that you're using for your project. So these are uh, virtually the same size. Like these are, these virtually have the same stitches in them. This one actually has a row more of stitches than this one, but look how small this gauge looks compared to this gauge. And that is because each individual stitch in this one, in this blue one, is larger than each stitch in this one. These are much more tight, uh, tighter together. And that is because when you're crocheting with your hook, the part here 
is where your yarn is going to slide. That's where your loops are going to slide with each stitch. So your loop is actually becoming the size of your hook. So you can see here compared to this hook and this hook that this is a much smaller gauge than this. I also wanted to show you an example of a double strand. This is the large hook that um, I showed you guys in another uh, tutorial. I've actually talked about this a couple times in my last two videos. Now this is not even um, the largest hook. They have even larger ones. There's one that's an N and that's uh, you know obviously a couple size larger than this. They go in alphabetical order starting with A. Um, so this is an L and what I did was I took uh, two strands. I took uh, you know a strand each of both of these yarns and I crocheted them together. So this is actually the same exact amount of stitches as this. And you can see the difference. There's a large size difference. Um, this is much smaller. Now this is the J hook that was larger than this other one that I showed you. But look how large that this is. Not only do you have a much larger hook, but you're using two strands of yarn. So it just works up much faster. And these are just some examples of how gauge uh, really works. It's kind of confusing when you very first start and let's say that you find a pattern that you really like. I know my very first uh, pattern that I did was actually off of a YouTube tutorial which inspired me to start making YouTube tutorials. Um, but as you can see like on this, this is a book that I've purchased and on this one just for example you see down here it tells you your gauge. 20 single crochet and 24 rows equals four inches by 10 centimeters. So basically what you would do, and um, this is not necessary for every project that you make, but if you were making something like, for instance, these are little baby shoes. So you would want to check your gauge because you want them to fit correctly for the baby. So what you would do is you would crochet 20 single crochets and you would make 24 rows and then you would measure and see how yours compares to this, um, this dimension. So if I was a loose crocheter, I may not need to make 20 single crochets to get the same size that the person that made this pattern needed 20 cr single crochets to make that size. Um, I know it sounds kind of confusing and I'm trying to explain it, but it is kind of a, a difficult um, thing to wrap your head around if you're not familiar with it at all. So um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was when gauge is important. So if you're making something like a blanket or a scarf, a dishcloth, um, anything that really, it doesn't matter how large it is, it's still going to work as a scarf or a blanket or a dishcloth uh, or, you know, those are just a few examples. You really wouldn't be so concerned about the gauge in those instances. Um, so really a gauge swatch is more of an advanced thing if you're, um, if you're trying to make, you know, baby clothing, baby hats, baby shoes, anything that you would need... Um, to measure to make sure that it's going to fit correctly to the person that you're making it for, that's when you would use a gauge. So I just wanted to kind of um, tell you guys about gauge, tell you what it was. When I very first started crocheting, I noticed that there was, people were always talking about gauge. It was always like, your gauge should be this, your gauge should be that, and I had no idea what they were talking about. And you know, when you look at patterns like this, and there's a thing up here where it tells you how to make a gauge swatch. You can see here how to make a gauge swatch and then it tells you how to do it. So really that's not necessary if you're making, um, like I said, a scarf or something like that. If you're looking at a pattern, you can kind of just, you know, breeze over that part and just get along with uh, the very first row of your project. But all most, most uh, patterns are going to have a gauge swatch or at least gauge instructions there so that way that you can compare what you're making to uh, the person that actually made the pattern and how theirs turned out. So um, just a little brief overview of what gauge is and why it's important and uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. 
Any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you.